Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Oli Sinube is my name. I'm with my namesake again. I think this is the third time that okay. we are together. He comes back. The last time he came here, uh, he vowed that he's going to win uh, the elections back home where he contested as a councillor in Matopo Mango constituency. He's back here as a victor. Welcome back. Thank you so much, man. Congratulations. Thank you so much, my brother. Right. We want to thank the people for voting for change. Yeah. When you left here, you left with a promise that you're going to win. And we asked you why you thought you were going to win. You told us the reasons. Yeah. And you have big, you are big, you have won. Yeah. But now, can you tell us the atmosphere that was there when you went to campaign at home up to the time when you, you were announced as the winner? Um... As we will all know, that uh, contesting against ZANU PF is uh, good as uh, signing for your death, uh, uh, a, a death trap, so to speak. Um, well, I, I, I must also say that uh, we didn't see much of uh, shenanigans that they normally pull okay. uh, towards elections. Um, there were some threats, okay, there were some threats. At some point, I was threatened uh, with poison, which oh. uh, that made my life to be a little bit difficult because you have to watch where you eat and yes. where you drink yes. and who you trust. You end up not even trusting the people around you. Yes. So at some point, um, that's what made difficult because even though the threats were not executed, but you would not take any threat lightly. As far as campaigning, I want to believe that we had a very strong team. Okay. Uh, even if they had other plans, they could not execute because they knew that uh, they were going to be uh, 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 challenged. Yeah. So who anyhow. threatened you? Is it, is it the rival? candidate or just somebody from the party or is it people from the party? Well, I think it was a orchestrated, a well orchestrated, okay. uh, calculated uh, strategy that mm -hmm. even if it's not the rival himself who said that, but there, there were some teams that had been established within the what. The other one was for propaganda because oh, it's even at some yeah. point I was as accused of being um, I, killing people, people should not vote for me because <laughs> I have killed people and there were some cases of murders that have been done in Mapisa. Okay. Those cases were upon me to a point that I had to even approach the police to say, uh, because it was too much, yeah? it was frustrating. At some point I felt like maybe I've set up myself for prison <laughs> and if I get caught up Maybe I will be like Jobs Kala or something whereby I'm and rotting who in prison for nothing. these people? Did they find out eventually? No, I think these are cases that uh, were reported to the police and the police had clues of what had happened. Oh. Some of the cases, um, the police were still investigating, you know. Okay. But obvious, uh, when you look where I was, where was I yeah. when those things happened? Uh, some, they happened when I was two years before even going up when to, you were still in South Africa? Yes. Ah, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so you were talking about your teams, that your teams were well set up. And yeah. yeah. How did they win it for you? Um, I think the most crucial thing that we did yes. was we did not want to relax and say ZANU PF has failed. Yeah. Uh, obvious people would automatically vote for uh, 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 the opposition, number one. Number two, we did not also bank on the popularity of the president yes. because there was this thing in some other places whereby people said, ah, this time people will vote for change just because the president is popular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we realized that also Triple C was a year and a couple of months old and people were not still sure whether is it MDC Alliance or MDC so we had to have um, strong teams village by village. Okay. We did our groundwork very well in terms of uh, door-to-door -door campaigns. 
And in our door-to-door campaigns, we were not just speaking about what we will do, but we were (coughs) educating people about their rights because people don't understand that it is their right to have clean water. It is their right to have medicine in at the hospitals it is yeah. their right to have a proper road it is their right um not to pay school fees at schools but they pay because the government of the day cannot afford to do that so we have to educate people uh, on their rights and also um unpack uh, the 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 manifest of triple c yes yeah then uh, we also had I think being me in that word also uh, yeah. was was a contributing factor because uh, that's the good thing about living your life with your people uh, yes. genuinely. Yes. Because even if when one day you come, you're seeking public office, people will not have doubt. Yeah, it becomes easier. It becomes easier. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, how many, let me say, yeah. rival candidates were there? It was you, it was Zalu PM, who else was there? Which other parties were there? Zappu was also there. So it was only three? Yeah, it was only three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, I had only... others pulled out. Uh, we... So they pulled out to support you? I am not sure whether it was to support me oh. or it was chickening out. I'm not <laughs> sure. But I want to believe as a person that believes, uh, in, that, that gives people benefit of doubt. Yeah. I want to believe that they pulled out because they realized that you can't if if you as any other candidate was not going to either beat triple c or zanu pf yeah yeah it's either you are there or you pull out to support triple c or support zanu and what was the margin with which you won against this closest rival i reckon it's zanu pf uh yes zanu pf uh and maybe let's uh uh tell the people that we are not just talking about a councillor who has been there for one term or two terms Okay. Yes, yes, yes. No, we're talking of a councillor who has been there since 1985, yes, yes, yes. and he, he was the chairperson of the of the. He was the council chair, okay. and an alderman. Yeah. Um, you are talking of somebody who, even Zanu PF National, yeah. they valued this man. Yes, and yes. I don't think anybody expected him to lose. Yeah. So that's why our win. Whether we have one with one vote or two votes, yes, yes, we yes. value it so much. Yeah, yeah. But to answer your question, um, it, it is so sad that in Zimbabwe, people are still not taking voting seriously. Yeah. That's why we cannot solve this uh, issue of uh, political dispute. Yeah. Because we don't have Zimbabweans that come out and vote in numbers yes, and decide. Yes, yes, so that the winner wins. Whether rigging or not rigging, the winner wins. Yes. Um, I, I think the margin was uh, over about 120 votes. Oh, okay. That's what we... Uh, in, we, in, we in a one, we that's a lot because we yeah. saw somebody winning a word as a candidate, somebody in Kwanda won, and the person got 204 votes. Yes. <laughs> in total. Yeah, that is the winner. <laughs> so, right, uh, you won this uh, election. Yeah. Uh, but before we get there yeah. to the next stage, Yeah. We held an interview with you yes. twice. Yes. In the second interview, we yeah. got, I think we have to state this. Yeah. We got a number of calls, okay. a number of messages, a number of comments, even from neutrals and even from people who are outside yeah. uh, of Triple C. Yes. Saying, why is it because of tribalism yeah. that this guy is contesting? At a what level? Yeah, when he's actually supposed to be campaigning for maybe in the least an MP, or he's supposed to be occupying uh, a national executive position in the party. Okay. So now, in a way, yeah, the voters saw this, and in a way, there are people, there are people in Europe, yeah, who sent messages to us and said, "This is the guy who must be voted in." Yeah. So to us. If people were voting based on what the candidates promised, yeah. you are already an automatic choice. We have to state these things so that Thank because you. we've been crying that Zimbabwean politics is ideologically bankrupt. People mm. just vote because there is a party. Mm, but mm, here, mm, mm, mm. I'm sitting next to you. When we did the interview, we told you that you nailed it. Mm. And people, neutrals are saying, even Zanu PF people are saying, yes, if we could get that guy, <laughs> you see. 
So now, I want to know if your national executive yeah. got this, and if they did, not after you have won, yeah. before you have even voted, what yeah. did they say to you? Yes, um, you, you know, the, the problem with uh, Zimbabwean politics is that there is too much assumption. We are using yeah. mostly, most of the time, we're using assumptions. Yes. And uh, we have uh, dwelt much on social media more than what is happening really on the ground. Yes. Yes. Um, a lot of things that is being said by, let me not speak for other political parties, yes. let me speak for Triple C. Yes. A lot of things that are being said about Triple C, they are not really exactly what is happening on the ground. Yeah. Before I won, uh, I, I, I did receive messages from the, the national executive yes. that um, it was a message of encouragement yeah. um, from different people, from colleagues, uh, people like Bajila. Yes. Uh, they, did, they did send uh, messages to say, we saw your interview and we really appreciate it. And I'm, 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 I was told also by my able uh, senator, who Senator Honorable Senator Mlocho, yes, that yes. Uh, even the president uh, said we, we, we should uh, protect uh, our people that yes. because that guy can be exposed now yeah, yeah. to to the regime, and we might hear stories. Yes. But with that being said, I I really appreciate all the comments, and I want to firstly appreciate you and. Um, uh, uh, AVG News that you are giving uh, a person of my caliber from rural areas yes, where we yes, don't yes. even have a, a <laughs> one radio station or a community radio station. Yes. But I think we have managed to articulate our ideas and our, our view as far as the Zimbabwean politics is concerned, which has gone across the globe. Yes. We, we appreciate that. And also the encouragement, the comments, because when people say uh, 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 you are doing good. Yes, yes. Uh, don't really uh, relax and yes, say, "Ah, no." True. People said I'm doing good. That is a challenge which you must accept and try by all means to even do better than what you think you have done. Yes. Yeah. So I feel that um, the the national executive has done justice. Yeah. They have uh, acknowledged. They have uh, encouraged me. Uh, a lot, even across the, the, the country, yes. I received a lot of uh, WhatsApp messages, emails, and I am very grateful that I did that interview before I won. Yeah. Because now, after I've won, those people that said, if you win, yeah. I'm going to be your developmental partner, yeah. then now they owe me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, it's still the most viewed political interview that we've ever had oh, wow. on this channel and it's still getting more views right okay now. and Thank i think God. people now the danger for you is that people are going back to listen to what you promised them okay and they'll be judging you based, based on, on what we are doing yes yeah. which and is good also tell you that like i'm saying people from zanu pf yeah do reach out to us yes and what i can say about you yeah having them having watched that interview is that fine we don't think alike they don't think alike. Yes, even yes, among yes. Themselves. Yeah, but definitely. Most of those who spoke to us are full mm. of respect for yes. you. Yes. And even after we had won, yeah. they said, but this guy, he deserves it. That's what they said to us. Okay. Many of them, that's what they said, you know, he deserves it. We hope he's going to unite people there as he promised. Yes. And that he's going to develop the area. Then going forward, mm. I reckon it was your first ever electoral contest yes. in the country. Yes, definitely. Now, you are there as their county. Yeah. And you see your numbers piling. How, how did you feel? How did the <laughs> adrenaline go? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, at some point, because, you know, we, we had uh, different polling stations. Yes, yes. Um, in the, in the, during the day, remember, I had conducted a lot of uh, interfaces village yes, interfaces yes, yes. whereby I met people and I spoke with the people face to face. Yeah. So now I I was getting familiar with the faces. Yes, yes. Uh, so I didn't even need to go to the counting after seven PM. Okay. I I I I, 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 I was observing during the day. Okay. And because I want to appreciate on that note um, the the people who are in diaspora. 
yes. because they really supported my campaign. Yeah. I I would be lying if I say I was not that uh, resourced. Yes. Um, I was the resources that I had in my disposal were enough, yeah. and also thank my family because they really supported me. Now. In the first polling station, I think I went there 5 a.m. I was already in the first polling station yes. with my polling agents, my uh, chief election agent. Uh, that was before agent. or after voting? Before voting, okay. in the morning. Okay. And my roving agent. And we waited until the polling station was opened. Yeah. And immediately I saw about 20 people that were uh, at the front then I realized that these people, I saw them in my yeah, interface yeah. meetings. So I knew that uh, I'm going to give him a run for his money. Yeah. Uh, then when we went to other polling stations, the voting pattern was very good and we could see that it was in our favor. Um, then when counting came, uh, the first polling station, I received, which was his stronghold. Yeah. And remember, me and him are coming from the same village. Yes, yes. He's my neighbor. He's not far from me. Okay. Yeah. And we're a little bit like related. Oh. Okay. Yes, because they, I, I call them Umkwanyana. So he's oh, like a brother-in-law. Okay. So yes. the, 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 the people in my village were really indecisive, you know. Okay. But I realized that I won in that village. Yes. Then I knew that we got it. So we waited until we went to the other polling station, which was the command center. Yeah. And when we got there, we were from the first polling station to that other polling station. We were, it was a convoy of ZANU PF and Triple C. Okay. They had their own cars ahead of us and yes. we were behind. And they were trying by all means to do these tactics of intimidating and all that because it was around 2 a.m. Okay. And I had a very disciplined team, as I said. They said no. Let's watch what they're doing. And halfway, they stopped. And we thought, okay, now that is it. They, are, they want to attack. Yeah. Only to find that they had received a call that side from the polling station that I, I say oh. called Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when we reached uh, the command center, mm. uh, I could see, the, 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 because they had already done counting, Okay. I could see that uh, my security guys, my polling agents, my roving agent, yeah. uh, and the, the, the catering staff, and everybody who was there, and even the party members, because they were all congregated there, yes. were in a very good mood. Then I realized that we won. Okay. That's, I mean, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it, but immediately I switched on to development, because I knew yes, that yes, yes. now I've won. Yeah. What next? Yeah. Now, other than intimidation, was yeah. there any violence experience during the campaign? I, I don't, you know, I think in Zimbabwe we have had this thing of propaganda a lot. Yeah. So I don't want to push a narrative which is not there. Yes. Um, in my word, I, I, there was no violence. Oh, okay. No. Okay. And I want to appreciate uh, my uh, counterpart yes. and uh, his party and the party leaders at, at, at what for of yes. ZANU PF because we didn't experience any violence. Okay, so after the announcement of the results, did he reach out to you? Did he congratulate you? No, I didn't see him. He was not there. Yeah. I thought also because he's an, an, an elder. Oh, okay. and, and you haven't seen him ever since? No, I've, I haven't seen him. I've, but I've uh, set up a, uh, a team of uh, elderly people within yeah. the village that uh, are going to go and uh, and set up an appointment because okay. I want to go and meet him. Remember, now because we have won, yes. um, even in my camp, you will have those people that will start speaking as they will, they wish. Yeah. They will say a lot of negative things. They will say that because they are happy they have won yes. after 40 something years yes. uh, trying and losing. Yes. Then they will say all negative things yes. of which at the end of the day when it, it, it reaches him, you will think I am the one who's doing that. Yes. While it's, I'm not. Uh, so I want to go and meet him just to tell him that um, I, I am a councillor of what for. Yes. I'm not a councillor of Triple C. Yes. Um, I'm a councillor that is willing to learn from him yes. as a very experienced man in this That's business. I also want to learn 
uh, from him and um, if, if willingly um, I will also try by all means to include him in as, as, a, as an ex official yes. or at, uh, at, at, at WATCO because he has the experience. I mean, he might have failed to do one or two things because of the policies and, uh, and, yeah. and ideology of ZANU-PF, not him as a person. Yes. Yeah, I've got nothing with him as a person. Okay. He's my homie and <laughs> so I should work with him if he's willing. And then have you maybe met some of these ZANU-PF leaders within the world? Oh yes, what, I've what, met. How is their response to your win? I've, I've met a lot of them. Um, surprisingly, a lot has, uh, has, has, has changed their mind. Yeah. Because after my win, I already, I did, um, I went back to the, to the people and I did yes. a word assembly whereby I invited everybody. To come and articulate because already I done my 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 village, uh, my what development plan. Yes. So yes. I, I I had to come and um, articulate how I am going to go about in terms of developing the what. Yes. And one of the key things which I think most people were not expecting uh, is to hear me um, inviting those people from other political parties. Okay. Be ZANU PF, ZAPU, any other political party that exists within the world. Yes. I, 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 I said it and I'm very clear about it. I will work with them. Okay. I, nobody's being uh, closed out. Okay. Everybody's welcome because the problem that we have uh, uh, in, 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 in Zimbabwean politics yes. it is the toxicity. Yes, yes, we will true. never attract any sound investment because of the way how we are doing our politics. Yeah, that's true. We will never develop. Uh, I, I'm sure you, you are, you are, you are I'm not I'm sure, I know. You have listened. If not, I know you'll do it. Yeah. Listen to the interview or the dialogue that Trevor Nube did uh, where the Diabetes, Honorable the Diabetes and um, Chris Mutswangwa in, yeah. in Victoria Falls. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You can see that the only stumbling blocks, block, in, in, in us as a country to develop is our politics. Yeah, that's true. It is very dirty, it is ugly, it is it is it is it is so toxic. It yeah, attracts yeah. nobody who is a sound investor. That's why we go to China and ask for them to come in, in via some political yes. You yes, know yes. I know you know people here in yeah, South Africa that can invest in Zimbabwe yes. easily and you are not in government. But you can't do that because who are you? Yeah. So yeah, I am right, buddy. That must be that yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, to answer your question precisely, I'm working with. Uh, I'm going to work, and I've invited them, and my office is open for 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 everybody who wants to bring ideas. Yes. Because we are. N I'm not developing the word for myself. Yes. And I'm not developing the word for Triple C members. No, the word is is for the people. Yeah. So I'm developing it for the people. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's where I was going, that you promised us, the main, 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 main thing that you promised here was you want to unite yeah. the people. And I, I believe that people can identify with political parties going to elections mm -hmm. during the election year in period. Yes. And then after the elections, they become one. Yes. They are a community. Oh, yes. True. The problems that affect you... Mm. Affects. Affect the next person, sure. whether there's, there's no stomach for ZANU PF, there's no <laughs> hunger which comes written triple C. Yes, if there is hunger hitting the world, the community to hit everyone, regardless of their political affiliation. Exactly. So now you, you say you want to reach out to him, you yeah. don't know what his response is going to be because what we know, especially with ZANU PF, is that the brains have to come from somewhere. Yeah hoping that it's not going to be the case with him. Yeah, but now the people on the ground, mm. especially those that are not in the structures of any political party, without regardless of being known to be supporting this particular party. Yes. How is their reaction, especially those from rival political parties, to your call for unity? Um, you see, I always say it takes a leader who, it, it takes the, the, a leader with a, 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 a proper and clear vision yes. to, 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 to convince people. You can't just convince people yeah, if you do not have a clear vision that you will sell to the people. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I have given my vision of how I I, I wish we can work, and uh, people are realizing yeah. that this is the first step if we want to talk about development. Yes. Yes. Um, we cannot talk about water. We cannot talk about schools. We cannot talk about roads. We cannot talk about economical um, uh, projects within the world if we haven't talk spoken about unity yes. we first have to talk about unity and when we agree that we need to be united yes then we can now talk about uh other things which can be infrastructure and otherwise yes. so those people um that you are talking about i've seen that a lot has welcomed the idea okay. because they understand that look um the challenge that we have had in the world for more than 30 years yes. is that um you will go to a certain village yeah there is a wedding and you will see 90 majority let me not put numbers majority of the people that will be there yes you can easily tell which political party is this yeah yeah, yeah. in a true. wedding that's true you go to a funeral because i passed on yeah. you will find that majority of the people are mdc yes, uh, yes. people that is not healthy yeah, for a true. community now you need a leader who will come uh, without even mentioning it yeah but live that life that says good people we can coexist together uh, with our different uh, political affiliations and ideologies but live together yeah. so the people have realized that uh, this is what we need and they are warming up to it because even in my meetings when i call village meetings when i even when we were doing the uh, village development committees yes. zanu pf people were there okay and other parties were there uh, in my uh watco uh, committee uh, i've got a zapo member who's, okay. who's who comes and sit there oh. in my what development committee he so, sits there so that's a good start uh, and now looking at the hierarchy of leadership yeah. you are the councillor yes above you there is a triple c mp yes a triple c senator yeah how does this make uh easier your way going forward if spec in fact in implementing your plans yeah thank you so much uh, 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 because this question a lot of people they ask yeah remember the mp and the senate these are the people that uh, help us in yes. terms of um, creating the laws yes, uh, yes. That, that, that help us to, to run the, the, the either local or, or national yes. uh, administratively. So me having the MP and uh, the senator of uh, my party, it's really a blessing because... Yeah. The good thing about it is that these are the people that I know, yes, yes. Uh, both the senator and the MP. Okay. Very uh, disciplined uh, uh, community members, um, people that are developmental oriented. If you look at it, on the, let me give you this, on the 21st of this month, on Saturday, yeah. I will be having a mining endeavor of what for. Okay. And the MP will be there the senator will be there yeah and people were shocked that they've never seen somebody called a senator in their work okay it's for the first time yeah. they are hearing that somebody called senator is going to be coming to their work an mp is going to come to their work to have or listen and tell them how he, he is going to deal with their problems in parliament yes so that alone it tells you that we have set ourselves into a good path. Yes. And th it is going to help because immediately when I have a challenge, I can pick up the phone and call the, min the, 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 the MP yes. and say, we've, at what for? We've got this problem. And you will see how we can work around it without wanting to sabotage me and me wanting to sabotage him. Yes. So we are all... So the idea of Triple C to, to really develop me, uh, people... I think it will work at what for. Yeah, it yeah. will. Uh, for the benefit of, of the viewers, yeah. the MP is Matalapo, is it? Matalapo in Debele. Debele. Yes. Then the 
Senator is no Santa Mlojo. Mlojo. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, the, uh, how many ones are there in the constituency? Uh, in our constituency, we have, you mean the whole constituency of Matopo yes. Mango? When, when you sit as a council, do you sit Matopo Mango or you mix with Matopo? No, we sit, we sit Matopo Mango. Okay, how yeah. many how many words are there? How many we have, are there? We have uh, we are sixteen and Zanu PF has got seventeen. So that okay. means uh sixteen plus seventeen plus thirty three. Thirty three. Okay. Yeah. So Zanu PF has got seventeen. Yeah. Now when you sit if you already elected the council chair? Yes. Is Zanu PF. It's Zanu PF. Okay. Yeah. How was the how many times have you said by the way? Uh as the full council. Yes. Uh, we haven't set as a food council. You only went to elect? Yeah, we only went to elect. Oh, let me say we set once because okay. that was a full council when we set to elect. Yes. So it was once. Yeah. Um, and then after we had set, uh, we set the committees that uh, deal with different uh, portfolios. portfolios. Okay. Um, but I, we have set as, as, as different uh, committees. Uh, how was the atmosphere? Is this toxicity existent in council or you are all, just like you have just espoused here, of the same view that when we are here, we represent the people, we no longer represent parties? Um, unfortunately, and I'm not saying that uh, with uh, a mind or a way of trying to make ZANU-PF look bad. Yeah. But I'm speaking the truth. Yes. yes. Uh, unfortunately, ZANU-PF's ideology of uh, segregation, um, oppression, yeah. uh, undermining, and bullying, yeah. you can see it even in the council. It's, it's there. And uh, I'm happy that we've got a good set of councillors from C. Uh, most of them are not just councillors because they are vocal yeah. and they swear a lot. Then people decided, ah, this one is rough, let's put him as a councillor. Yeah. We've got councillors that have got, um, um, that, 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 that have really been uh, into the different uh, spheres okay. uh, at their own right. So we're coming in with a lot of experience. A lot of education, mm -hmm. and which uh, I didn't really realize or see from my counterparts. So when they bring that bullying, we are bringing uh, civilization. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So it's likely to be a bumpy ride going forward, uh, especially yes during full council meeting. Yeah, it will, and that one not just for the sake of it being a bumpy ride. Yeah. But it will be a bumpy ride because. There are so many things that we have already identified okay. um, which we need to either get clarity because we won't immediately conclude that they, 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 they're wrong or they were wrong. Yes. But we need to be given clarity yeah. on how some things are done that way or why are they not done that way. Yeah. And um, if you look at, uh, let's say, Mapisa mm -hmm. right now, you, you ask yourself, why haven't we been given the town status yes, and yes. one will conclude that uh, the way how we are doing things as council maybe we are also contributing yeah. to us not be given a, a town council status but do they show any remorse uh, in terms of them having failed to take this area to where it's supposed to be or to them it's just business as usual you know the the, the, the the one of the things which I believe most Zimbabweans will have been clouded by the toxicity of Zanu PF's politics yeah. to a point that we have failed to acknowledge and appreciate those people that are within the Zanu PF system who are really um, for development, yeah. who are really uh, there and really want to see uh, the country going forward. We have such people at 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 at, at um, uh, Matopo Mango uh, Council. We do have such people. Yeah, because my belief is that forty three years after independence, we shouldn't be having elected officials behaving like political commissars yeah, and, <laughs> in an elected office which now belongs to, and uh, which now is supposed to be serving the people. Yeah, and listening to what you are saying, and I have seen some of these things even. At higher level, yes. where you'll have 
people like Chris Mutswangwa, yeah. Patrick Chinamasa, yeah. showing that they're showing you that they are remorseless and exactly. they're even proud of what they're doing, yes. treating the country backwards. But when you look or listen to what their president says most of the time, yeah. he, he comes across, cuts across as somebody who tries to unite the people. Of course, he does have his own bouts mm. of arrogance where yes, he will tell yes. you that he teaching mm. and the other mm. stuff. But well, moving forward, you've already mentioned that one of the things, of the first steps, let me say, that you want to employ going forward is to unite the people. And already you've said what uh, you have already tried to do mm. to try and unite the people. Mm. What are the next steps that you're going to write? Let me say, during the next five years, yeah, maybe if you have some short term goals, long term goals, and medium term goals. Um, as I said, that on the 21st, uh, we are having this endeavor, mining endeavor. Yes, um, remember our rural district councils. They are broke. Yes. They don't have money. Especially when you have programs and projects that I have. Yes. You you can't even think of going there and asking for money. Yes. Because there is nothing. For example, uh, at this era, we should have a a a a a, a borehole drilling rig. Yeah. Pay, every council should have that rig, uh, but we don't. We don't even have a bulldozer. We don't even have a cheaper truck. Yeah. We don't. So whenever, even if I decide to say um, that dam needs to, uh, uh, we need to take out slurry and all that, how am I going to do it? Yeah, the council does not have the capacity. So now one has to look on other ways yeah. of saying, how do I get the funds? Um, that's when I checked. Uh, and we have done that, we have done our research, like I told you that uh, we are coming with a lot of experience yes. uh, in terms of administration and management. So I have looked when I was doing my word profiling, yes. we saw that there is so much wealth that is taken, um, I will use the word illegal. Yeah. Why am I saying illegal? Because we are not benefiting as the community yes. and that is gold. Uh, we've got plus minus five grams, uh, five uh, kgs okay. of gold a month that is extracted in one form. Yeah. That is a lot, Baba. Even if we are given 10% of that money, yes. it is going to do something. Now, the president of Zimbabwe, uh, 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 Nagawa, he says, uh, yes, yes. and I, I believe that it filters to. Uh, uh, village in Obakwa never never was in Obakwa never never. Yes, yes. Then I'm asking myself, Gubaka or Guyaka requires you to have money. Yes, how do true. I build a school without money? How do I build? And if you saw the minister um, of uh, mining, he clearly said that uh, miners should uh, make sure that the communities benefit. Yes, so. This is another uh, uh, struggle that I'm going into now. Yeah. As I was telling you about this uh, company that is, I don't, I would say mining, but it has given some of its claims to the people. Okay. And it only want 5%. But their employees who yeah. are supervising that process are doing a lot of shenanigans. At the end of the day, the community is not benefiting okay. at all. So I'm going to get the money there. It's either you, 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 you mine there and make sure the community benefit. And when I'm saying community benefit, I'm not saying go and buy us a millimeter of sugar. Yeah. No, yeah. we are building a school. As I speak right now, I've got a school whereby there's a church next to it. Yeah. It's, it's in Marueja village. Uh, there's a church next to it. Because of the shortage of classrooms, children, um, they go to the assembly in the morning and then after, they have to go to the church to go and have their lessons conducted in the church. It is a situation that we have in Zimbabwe. And this church has opened its doors to this school yeah. because kids cannot, it's rainy season now, yeah. they can't uh, go under the tree. Yeah. But we are extracting about five kgs of gold, 
from that very same village about four kilometers away from the school there is a lot of mining activities that is happening there and when you ask who is mining here yeah people don't even know where these people are coming from yeah, that was my next question who owns the mining claims in that particular right there is a company uh, or there is a family called stone family yeah, I'm sure you've heard about them. Yes, yes. These people have been given these mining rights, I don't know when, right? Now, what this family has done is given the community, I think from Mpogazi uh, up the Madobo, yes, yes. up until Shashi or somewhere there, 18 claims. They've given these uh, claims to the people. And they said, right, we don't have that capacity. Please, people, go and mine. Yeah. And we appreciate that from the government. It's, that's a good arrangement yes. for the community. It's okay. We, we, we appreciate it. But because of the poor leadership, yeah. whereby there is no transparency, we use political uh, affiliations to sideline other people and all that. So people were being intimidated, even if, because gold works with your luck also yeah then you find that in policy goes and see where there is gold yeah. he has to go and report to the company that ah, i'm mining just behind that mountain and i found there is something there yeah the company would say okay go and mine take your all bring it to the mill at this side yeah and then we take five percent that is a fair deal yes. you take everything that is a poor me and you in a village got gold pay 5% to the person who holds the mining claim. Yeah. The rest we take, we build our schools, we, we build our homesteads, we develop ourselves. But the management that is there is doing a lot of shenanigans. That's what we're going to discuss. So I would say the people that are mining there, 90% of them, they are not from the white. And how did they get these claims? Was it because of the former councillor or was it because of somebody at the top this looks like it's a it's a it's a cartel you know it's it's not just uh your 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 your, your small guy down here yeah. uh, which is me a counselor uh obvious if i have to do that if i have to do such deals my mp has to be involved yes my senator has to be involved and my provincial party leaders at some point they will be involved depending on the volume of uh, the production yeah and if really there is good stuff there maybe even my president will, will be involved so i am saying that um we still have to see exactly who controls these things yeah. and we are not saying a, a, a good investor from uh, uh plum tree or maswingo should yeah. not come here yeah but when you come here do things right Yes. Mine, get gold, even because you are going to go and sell your gold at Fidelity or wherever they sell it. Yeah. Don't tell us that you are paying the government so you will not really do anything here. No. Even if in, 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 in a normal business environment, there is CSI, which is uh, Community Social Investment. Yes. You can't just come and extract cages and cages of gold in our area and you leave us with nothing. Instead, you leave us with TB, you destroyed our environment, you're destroying our roads, yeah. you are really causing a lot of destruction, and we, you leave us with nothing. That is where um, I am going to stamp my foot down, and I hope other councillors also in their areas, yes. they will join the forces. Okay, so that covers for the short, medium, and long term, because the making sure that local resources benefit Yes, but uh, just to add on that, yeah. I also already have established um, trainings which I call personal development uh, programs okay. for the youth. Mm. Remember, the youth is the future. Yes. Now, you can't just come in policy to a young man who has been experiencing brutality, toxicism, and all these other form of uh, 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 abuses. Yeah. You just come to that guy and you say to him, I've got 2,000 broiler chickens. I want you to look after them. He's yeah, not going yeah. to do that. That's true. At some point, he's going to dump it because he wants them to grow tomorrow. They must be chickens. <laughs> yeah. So now what I've said, I said to, the, to all my village development committees, which I'm very proud of them yeah. because it's people that are well known in the community. And these are people that are, some are retired um, teachers and all that. 
So I've said we need to have this paradigm shift yeah. uh, when it comes to the youth and women also, yeah. uh, whereby we empower them and give them that um, confidence of saying, um, I can do this. Our people do not have that mentality of saying, I can do it. Yes. Today you are interviewing me here. At some point you thought about having this equipment yes. and you said, but I can do it. Yeah. I can do it. And um, here we are today. And in the next, and I'm saying that prophetically, yes. in the next three years, I'll be seeing uh, a, a television station yeah, uh, whereby it will, you, it, you, will be the, you are the CEO of it. Yeah. Uh, you will be seeing a lot of programs that you'll be offering. Um, you've got people like Zenzele Ndebele of sight. Yes, you, you, yes. I mean, a guy came and nobody was like thinking he's doing something that makes sense. Yeah. So that's where I am to say this youth must be given um, skills and that self-belief yeah. we must restore it so i've got programs that are running and i'm glad that there are sponsors that are coming you know when you youth sometimes in rural areas when you're going to conduct a session you need some refreshments you need yes. food and all that i've heard some people from diaspora that have said you are doing very well we are going to support you apart from that uh we also already already we have uh kick-started uh, programs economically generating uh, economy I mean uh, programs that generate income income generating programs okay. we have already started uh, whereby the women are I, I'm, I'm, and I'm doing it myself okay. because I've got that experience yes, yes. I am t that's the good thing of electing uh, somebody who has been in the office yes. because he will bring the experience yeah. so what I'm doing is that I am teaching most of the women that never worked who rely on their husbands yeah. on how to convert your homestead to an income generating hub by doing horticulture programs and all these other small things which you don't have to ask for money from your husband yeah and then talking about the youth when i went home uh, earlier this year mm -hmm. i was so much uh touched yeah yeah i don't know if in a bad way I guess. but i was so much let me say embarrassed yeah by what yeah, i yeah. saw yeah very young people mm. at the age of 22 i was already working as a cop yes but i saw people who are 22 20 19 25 30 yeah wasted yes they were drinking this they, they call it star bread. yeah in jango yeah they dilute it with water they yeah. can't afford <coughs> any drink to, mm. to use as dilution. And these are young people who you can tell that there is no more future here. The next thing that's coming here is that one will kill the other or they're going to die of depression or they will contract some illness and die. Mm. So how prevalent is this alcohol abuse in your heart? Uh That is a national problem. So my word, my word is not excluded. Yeah. We are having that issue, and uh, it's it's unfortunately that when we try to look at because you know, like now I know you. Yeah. If I see you in the next five years behaving otherwise, yeah. Before I blame you, I need to find out. Yeah, that's true. Maybe I will discover that you have divorced, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or you have lost your company. Yeah. Or something has happened. That's what makes you to behave that way now the youth of zimbabwe when we see them behaving the way that they are behaving it is because of the way how our government is running the affairs of the country yeah uh, i promise you you can't rely on saying we fought for the land and the youth we are giving you land yeah. but you don't give the skills and when you wherever you support the youth you support based on party affiliations now you this is a problem that has been created by our politicians yeah. especially zanu pf so that the youth will be wasted and when they are wasted that's why you see in a normal country in Go, yeah. you will never see a political party campaigning with a full track 
full of uh, two pieces of chicken and yeah, a cold drink. Yeah. You'll never see that in a normal country. That's true. But you see it in Zimbabwe because of what? Because they know that the man on the ground, he cares less about the job. Yeah. He cares less about a good road. He cares less. All what he cares about is his stomach. Yeah, yeah. And who created the problem of stomach? It's ZANU PF again. No jobs, no employment, nothing. Then they come again and because in a normal country, ask yourself, Chamisa has been voted and won the elections because we should also say that he has won the elections. I know maybe <laughs> we, 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 it's another discussion for another day. Yeah. But Chamisa has been voted and I, I travel uh, a lot going to Chamisa's uh, 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 rallies, yeah. or should I say. I, I, I don't use the party money. I use my money. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll find that a day sometimes, like I was in Gwanda last week, I used close to 600 rand for mm -hmm. me to go there and come back, food and all that. Yeah. Why do I do that? It is because of his blueprint and also his, the, the energy that he produces. I mean, how would a politician come with a, full of, uh, a truck full of uh, chicken and say, yeah, vote for me, and then after the rally you are given a chicken and you are being undermined. You are being uh, reduced to nothing. And uh, the truth is, let's respect people. Let's show people that we are there because we want to serve them and we want to become a better society. Yeah, yeah. And my biggest fear in that is that um, I'm talking here about some body who is now 25 years. Yeah. He never went. He yes. wakes up in the morning. Mm. Maybe he helps someone who's just alighted from a bus, yes, yes, yes. carry their stuff, yeah. home, they give them 50 rand, they go pay, they drink, all that. Money. Yeah. You're talking about somebody who will never have a family. You're talking about somebody who will never own anything. Yeah. And so now what we are creating is a culture where we have 30 years from now, people our age ah. who are wasted, no. who cannot be considered to be a Correct. And these people will be deciding the country's future. Because yes. They're expected to vote, as you are saying already, based on the pieces of chicken that they got for free. Yeah. And these people are creating the next generation of Zimbabweans. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we need to have a solution to this. And what is your solution okay. starting at what level? I, I am glad we speak about the problem and not just leave it hanging. Yeah. But we also uh, try to dissect on what could, what can we do. Yeah. Number one, as I told you, that the toxism of our politics, we need to get rid of it. Yeah. At village level, at what level, at district level and national, we need to all work towards that goal of getting this toxicism out of the way. Yeah. Whether you are triple C, Zapu, Zanu, let's work out that. Number two, uh, Obvious, this is a problem that is affecting our youth psychologically. Yeah. Uh, the plan that I have is to, I, I, I'm still writing uh, uh, something on that. Yeah. I'm still doing a write up on that because I need to go offices. You yes. see, today I'm talking with you, I'm in South Africa. Yes. I'm from a meeting where I was, I, I was meeting um, uh, partners that I'm bringing my bow to them. I'm not going to just ask for money all the time. Yes. No, I will also ask for services yes. from people, whereby these people, they need counseling. Yeah. We need to counsel these young people. And we also need to empower them. Yeah. And we yeah. also need to develop their vocational skills. Because you might find that this young man is 22. He's, I have one like that. Yeah. He, very intelligent young man, but he has been wasted to alcohol. Right, I've got a generator at home, yeah. and I say, and I say to him, he said to me, you know what, Mdala, Mina, I know how to weld. I said, where did you learn? He said, I was staying with my father in Gwanda, so I know how to weld. Then I said, okay, take this generator, you will be doing your welding and all that. The other day he told me, he said, ah, you know what, I, it's somebody said he wants to make a scotch card, yeah. and I charged him six thousand. I said, do it. Yeah. So you see that these people, they are willing. Yeah. They have the will, but there is no support system. If it's there, it has to be partisan, whereby a uh, support but uh, repeat. And then if you are not a ZANU PF member, sorry, go wasted. So my program on that, to be precisely and answer your your question, 
One, I'm looking for counseling. Mm -hmm. That one is a fact. We cannot yeah. avoid it. One will say, where are you going to get it? We've got people that have started organizations. Yeah. They are all over Zimbabwe. They want to do counseling and they want to give such services. Yeah. Let's not put red tapes in the words because you know what? Most of the words, they don't have development uh, as they should. It's because of the counselors. Counselors, sometimes they get, they want to consolidate their positions and power. Therefore, policy, even if he has, remember, let's say when uh, somebody in my ward brings you yeah. and say, counselor, already I've had situations like that. Yeah. Counselor, I've got my uncle. He is in UK. Yeah. And he says he can pay um, a social worker to help us with uh, a teenage pregnancy. Then I think, oh, he's, now this one is bringing his uncle. 2028, yeah. the uncle might challenge yeah. me. Yeah. Then I put the red tapes. I start dilly dally. We don't have to do that. Yeah. You, we must be open to those partners that are coming within our words. Yeah. So that's what I've opened. I'm opening that channel of people that comes with those experts to come and help us. So counseling is very important. Develop vocational skills yeah. because not everybody is academically given. No. Some they want to do welding, they want to do building. Remember those days when Zimbabwe had a uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Today, some of the people that are building South Africa, the best constructors yeah. uh, in South Africa, they, 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 they were trained in Echewin yes. in Zimbabwe. So these are the things that we should, and you don't need a lot. You can just open a ground, yeah. get the bricks, buy some trowels and all that get a proper builder to come and train these guys yeah yeah believe me when they have something to do already yes um i, will, I have to mention that i've already written to another bus uh, company because i'm asking for sports uh way okay. because we want to use sports yeah. to take away uh, our children from these things from the age of uh, 11 up uh, from the age of nine up until 25 both uh, girls and boys because there's this tendency of uh, starting uh, soccer clubs for boys yeah. and we don't leave the we don't do it with the girls you find that those boys after they've played they now go and uh, waste the girls yeah. so we need to empower everybody so that whenever they engage in these things that are uh, they should really be conscious yeah, yeah they shouldn't be pushed by peer pressure and boredom but right now they're pushed by bottom. Keep them busy. Yeah, you've already mentioned uh, that the diaspora was so important to your campaign. Yeah. The last time we spoke, I yeah. asked you about the role of the, of the diaspora. Yes. In the in the world. Yes. Now, you already have spoken yesterday. You told me you were in meetings. Yeah. Uh, how do you hope to? take advantage, let me say, or yeah. to leverage yeah. the existence of diasporans in your world. Have you reached out to them? And what role do you foresee them playing? And what, what, what has been their response if you've reached, reached out to them? Thank you so much for that question, um, Bob. And I want to really appreciate once more the diaspora community. Yeah. Um, being one of them that have lived in South Africa for more than 26 years, um, I, I, I respect them and I really appreciate them. I wish one day Zimbabwe will be a country, a normal country, because for now it's not yet normal, yeah. to be a normal country whereby we will really see these people coming back home in, 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 in large numbers. Um, me, what I've, what I've uh, really planned is that Yes, for now, I'm not going to have any mass meetings with them, especially in South Africa. But I'm coming back probably in November, where I am going to have um, meetings to articulate and tell them and show them my development plan okay. and how they come in. But with that being said, already I'm talking about people that are involved. Yes. They're involved in a very uh, a, a big margin. One, we've got a clinic that is at roof level now. Okay. Yes. Uh, we started it. Um, I was the, 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 the project manager. Yes. Before I even got 
um, roped in as a candidate. Yeah. I was the project manager there, of which when I, I was brought in, I stepped down yes. because I didn't want to involve too much politics there. That yeah. is a community driven project. Yes. And now I am seeing and I'm monitoring and I'm helping them um, with all the things that they need back home as the support system. Yeah. So the clinic is being constructed by the diaspora. We've got bridges in another village in Sechane that were done by the diaspora. Okay. And they are still willing to, 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 to invest back home, tough as it is, because there some are doing um, ordinary jobs wherever they are. Yes. It's not like when somebody is in South Africa, UK, Ireland, or wherever, they are earning so yeah, huge. Yeah, but the little they have, they plant it back, and we appreciate it. So I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, open to the diaspora community because as I was talking about the mining, diaspora also is one of our development partners. We have that um, uh, door open whereby they can do whatever they want as long as uh, it, 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 it makes the world better. Okay, uh, and last time you, you spoke about having set up a, a committee yes. to work with. Yeah. Are you planning or already have you done it yeah. to set up a diaspora community, a community of diasporans yes. who are from the world who then do whatever they do that side maybe based on the template that you're going to give them, yeah. but also doing it for the assistance of the community back home through your office? Yes, definitely. Uh, the committee is, is, is already there. Okay. Because I, there is my word, the name of my word is called Marco Ward. Yes. If you come to South Africa, there is a development uh, a program that we came up, which is called Marco Ward Development Initiatives. Okay. So when you come to South Africa, there is a committee already. Yeah. When you go to UK, there is a committee already. In Blawai, there is a committee already. In Botswana, there is a committee already. Okay. Of people that I can take the phone now and call. Oh, okay. Now, how do the problem that we have identified, because I was part of this committee, yeah. I was even in the top executive the, 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 the committee, the problem that we are finding is that the, 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 the councillor that was there, I don't think it was his doing, but he was, most of the time he was, I don't know whether he was afraid of us or what, but he was trying by all means to avoid us. He was trying by all means to, to, to use us when he wants, it suits the agenda, like the clinic. Yeah. At some point, we saw it on the media that the clinic was constructed by the government, which is not true. Yeah. And we should be factual in these things. So uh, we suffered that thing of... Uh, uh authorities not helping us yeah so now me as a counselor with that committee that is there i'm going to make sure that i give them the support all the support that they want either it's for their own because some you know what they want they say you know what i'm in uk i want to come back home but uh before i come i want to set up a, 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 a company whereby maybe I want to have a supermarket or I want to have a, a book store and all that. Then me as a counselor, I shouldn't be jealous. I should do my job because yes. I'm a development officer. Yes, that's true. When that guy comes and he set up a, a book store, it's good for the community. Not because they're going to go and drink. But at the end of the day, when I have something in a school which needs a thousand rand, I can easily go to that guy and say, please, my guy, man, help us. We need this at the school. Yeah. So making sure that everybody is set up as they please in the community. In the long run, it benefits the world. Yeah. So I'm going to be, my office is open for the diaspora community. Whether they, come, they want to come as developmental partners or they want to come to do their own businesses yeah. and all that, they are more than welcome. Yeah. And then the other thing that you have always complained about is this issue of exclusive, uh, uh, being exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Being exclusionist, let me say. Okay. Uh, you've already highlighted a problem of, which we all know about, of alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. You've spoken about uh, counseling sessions, mm. and that already speaks to the inclusion of NGOs yes. in whatever plans you have. Yes. But also, there is a law hanging fruit in terms of providing counseling 
we have our conventional churches. Unfortunately, uh, under Zanupi, let me state this, they have corrupted the church, especially these happy clappy churches, mm, mm, where you mm. find motivational speakers <laughs> claiming that they are, they are pastors, pastors and, and prophets. They are doing it for the money, they are yeah. promising people easy money which doesn't exist. Mm. But we have conventional churches that we grew up under. Yes. Mm -hmm. In Matopo, I know of, there is the SDA, the Roman Catholic, CSA, Roman Catholic, <coughs> BICC. Yes. Mm. So, what role do you have? And I will tie this with the NGOs. What role do you have for this? Because they are complaining that, number one, they are instrumental. Churches and NGOs are very instrumental mm. in bringing in peace, mm. uh, especially where there has been political violence before and cancelling people mm. who are in different situations mm. so what role do you have for them both of them churches and ngos in trying to make your word work ah you 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 see sometimes being an experienced journalist it helps because you you can even become like prophetic what happens is that um on the 26th of this uh, of this month yes uh we are having our first of uh, its kind okay. it, in what for whereby all churches all denominations are going to converge in one place okay. for a church service okay. and this is a church service that does not choose um, remember people associate you find that uh, there is this church it has got a branch here and a branch there so whenever they want to come together they, they go as a certain denomination yes, yes. but on the 26th we're coming together as the people of what for okay right this is in line with the the, the manifesto of triple c if you check the first thing that uh, our manifesto speaks of yeah. is to recognize and acknowledge the churches yeah. remember a human being is in three forms yeah. a human being has got a soul has got a spirit and this is physical. Yes. Now, politicians normally don't care about your yeah, spiritual being. They don't care. That's why if they, they cared, they wouldn't really raise a Bible. When, when we are sworn in, we raise hands and Bible and all that. Yeah. And immediately when we leave, we do contrary to what is written in that yeah, Bible. Now, one would say to me, why do you believe that uh, putting people together Human beings, when you separate them spiritually, you have caused chaos. Because they will start seeing things different spiritually. Yeah. Now, bring them together. Because even if when I are a Roman Catholic, I'm a, I'm a SDA, there's a BICC guy, there's a whatsoever, and these other uh, 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 sharp shoe uh, boys yeah, exactly. there. What is happening is that we are all worshipping the same God. Yes, yes. The doctrine is something that has been designed by somebody for his yeah, own yeah, benefit. True, true. It has nothing to do with God. Yeah. I mean, that is where I'm coming from. Uh, so on the 26th, we're coming together. And in that service we are going to be also speaking about the challenges we are facing. Okay. This is going to be a norm for the next five years. Whether we are going to do it once a month or we are going to do it once every three months or once every one year um, and make it big, maybe uh, do it, if we do it once a year, we do it for over the weekend. Yeah. We are going to do that. And I believe in us doing that, it will bring us together. It will make us realize that we are off one God, yeah. but we are being divided by the doctrine that has been created by people. Yeah. Because yeah. if I ask you, what is the difference between the God of Romans and the God of uh, 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 Seventh Day Adventist? What's the difference? It's just one thing. It's just one thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's why sometimes the scholars will come back and say there is no God. Yeah. Because uh, the way how we people that claim to follow God, we conduct ourselves. Yes. Then they will tell you, the atheist will come and tell you that uh, there is no God, you are God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As yeah. we draw to a close, yes, uh, it was a two-pronged uh, question. Yes. Now, the role of NGOs, because oh, okay. most of these NGOs, 
are being led by people who are just out there to make the money. Yeah. They write reports, very beautiful reports afterwards, yeah. claiming that they have done certain things yeah. without having done anything. They are okay. not working for the people, they are not working within communities. Yeah. So is there a way that you want to first tie them in, into your plans, but of course they do have their own. Yeah. And also making sure that they don't lie about the word. Mm. claiming that we have done this without having done it okay without uh, a, a, a fear let me mention uh, organizations like pro africa um world vision yeah. um these are the organizations that are doing tremendous good job um as as as, as ngos yes. and we appreciate that they've drilled balls they've they are doing um, uh, 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 economical uh, 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 generating programs yeah. um, within the world. Now, I think every NGO that comes to the world yeah. should definitely do a presentation and see if really it's in line with our development of yes, yes. You cannot just come in uh, just because you want to fulfill your mandate. <laughs> We give you uh, the ground to abuse us yeah, and fulfill true. your mandate of uh, filling in the forms. All what you need is the signatures, yeah. and you we will quantify your work. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be a counselor that says, "Yeah, you said you want uh, 50 girls that you want to train," yeah. and within 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 the process of your training, I will quantify your your work. I will check the quality of the work that you're bringing, okay. the end product. And if you are not really uh, worth keeping, why keep you? Yeah. Then you have to go. They, we, we cannot really allow people to advance their 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 their, their wants and wishes at our expense yeah, at the true. poor communities. So as a counselor, I need to be awake and make sure that whoever comes in in the in the name of they want to help, they really help yeah. and they give us something of substance. You cannot just come and uh, give us forms and say, no, girls, fill your names, your IDs and your signatures. And then next week again, and then you go and claim 10,000 US dollars. Uh, while at least you yeah. did not even uh, do a job that is worth 50 US dollars. Yeah. No, it cannot happen. When you come, we must really check your track record also. Yeah. Yeah. If you are an organization that is new, yeah, well, we, can, we will give you a chance. But all we want is quality. Yeah. If you don't have quality work and you know that you're mandated, and we are going to to to, to it, we are not uh, we are not like uh, uh, dunderheads whereby you will come and fool us with your 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 your, your colored uh, your colored uh, papers and all that, and then we think uh, policy is a deal. Yeah. No, we will we will we will check your track record, even if it's not the track record of. The organization. Yeah. We will check the track record of policy behind the person behind yeah. the organization. What have you done when, as a person, wherever you come from, yeah. either for yourselves, have you built anything? Have you done anything? You can't come and teach us about financial uh, management while at least yeah. you don't even have a bank account. Yeah. No, we will be lying to ourselves. So those are the things that I'm there as a steward of the people, given the mandate by the people to make sure that what comes into the world is of quality good intention if it's a if it's a, an agreement it must be an agreement that does not abuse yeah. or suppress or oppress anyone okay and you've played some you've placed some emphasis on the youth and your plans for the youth yeah but now what plans do you have for the elder because they also constitute uh, members of your constituency look they they when you when you've got the youth up yeah. and running and have them sustainable economically yes Believe me, the elderly are taken care of, okay. because there is no one who, who's elder, who's old, without somebody who's young within their home state. Yeah. But with that being said, the elderly people, I'm surprised that in Zimbabwe, um, we do not have a, a, a proper strong social services, because if we had that, like countries like South Africa, you've got people, elderly people that are given free uh, uh, money because yeah, yeah. not not even pension fund they call it social grant yes they're given that um one of the guys that was doing mining before these uh, zanu pf people chased him away 
uh, do you know what he was doing? And he's a local guy. Okay. He was giving uh, every elderly person 50 US dollars. Okay. Yeah. He will go and sell his gold at Fidelity in Mapisa because we have Fidelity there. Yeah. Then he will come back from whatsoever. He will take maybe 500 US dollars and he will give to the elderly. Okay. Right. That is not, that is good, but it's not something that I can encourage. Yeah. We would rather have a system whereby we say to the elderly people, um, we will bring a doctor for you. Yeah. Uh, or we will go and buy food for you. Then we come, we, we give them. Yeah. So the elderly people is our responsibility. We have to look after them. We have to be very, very, very careful about their social welfare. Yeah. And once the young people within the world, majority of the young people who are languishing in poverty, yeah. are sustained and given skills that will sustain them, we will automatically have taken care of our elderly people. Then those that do not have anybody that will support them. I, as a counselor, together with my uh, village development committees, we have to make sure that we get... Um, that's where also other organizations with their goodwill yeah. come in. Allow them to come in and look after that. Yeah. And then any climate change programs that you have? Obvious. That is, that is a key thing. And I'm glad you asked me about that. Uh, that shows that you respect me. <laughs> because if you didn't respect me, you are were, were going to think that is now, yeah. that is beyond the councillors. <laughs> right. Climate change should be addressed from every village, every ward. Yeah. We, this, this thing does not need people to go to United Nations and make noise and, and drink tea about it and not being practical. Yes. We should be practical about this thing. It's a serious thing. And one of the things that we need to do is to plant trees. Yeah. It, planting trees is one of... What makes the, 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 the Amazon uh, to be what it is? It is because of the amount of trees that it has. Yeah. If just talking from a layman's understanding. Now, what is it that we are doing? Already we have identified in my word uh, places whereby you find with the jackals, they are living there, yeah. the hyenas are living there, or even if they don't live there, but they come to, 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 to come and eat our goats and all those things. Yeah. So we have noticed and we have spoken with the traditional leaders. Remember, I, as a councillor, I work very closely with the the village heads including the headmen so we worked together i spoke and i pre i've already presented i said to them but then why do we keep on these bushes yeah. we should just cut these trees and they said what are we gonna do i said we need to plant uh, fruit trees yeah i'll give you this uh policy you can go and google it a an avocado tree if you plant one yeah. in five years the f five years, if, if it's not crafted, in five years, it will not give you, it will give you more than 50 fruits the first time. And this thing can uh, give you fruits for the next uh, 50 years. Yeah. And if you check how much is the value of an avocado now in the market, you will see that there is money in such things. Yeah. So now what we have said, we said every village, my, my word is made up of four villages. Okay. Every village we are going to identify less in this is I'm putting a It's just an open space. Yeah. Doing nothing. So what we're gonna do is that we will drill a ball, we fence that place. Okay. Then we get uh, 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 these experts who are going to come and do testing for the soil. They mm -hmm. test what fruit trees can we plant there. If it allows us to plant mangoes, we will plant mangoes in huge in a commercial uh, uh, scale then go to another village all what and in return what will these trees do to the climate change issue yeah. it answers our question okay. at the same time also um, if you look there is so much uh, mining that is done which we also which is damaging the the the, the, the climate yeah. we also need to work together with the relevant authorities if I, I i i've never asked emma what they are doing in my this is environmental management one yeah. one uh, organization that is funded by the government if i'm yes. not mistaken yes. so these are the people that we need to keep them busy we need to keep them on their toes yeah. they need to give us their programs what they have 
so that I can say to them, this is my problem when it comes to the environment. Yes. Because when we look after the environment, the environment will look after yeah, us. That's true. There are so many soil erosion has happened. Um, just to wait, because even if you didn't ask it, let me say it in closure. My ward has got two deep tanks. Okay. And when we do, we did uh, our our ward profiling. We found that we need four. Okay. Every village must have its own deep tank. Yeah. Yeah. Why? One, so that the cattle should not be driven for a long distance. Yeah. Because when you drive them for a long distance, they create. Um, uh, 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 so, sort of like ridges, you know, yes, yes. whereby when rain comes, yeah. it washes away that. So these are all the things that destroy our dams and all those our dams, so to speak. Yeah. So now, when you have a, a deep tank within the village, the cows are just coming from all directions to one yeah. space, yeah. so they don't really move that much. These are all things that are in place. So when it comes to climate change, and also um, we are setting up. Uh, the, 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 the bins within business centers in rural areas. Yes. And these are bins that you can just come with uh, bricks, you build, you plaster it, yes. you leave it all, and then when you, you want, you can burn. But we are still trying to find out how can we not burn and emit that smoke uh, because we will be contributing already. The ozone layer is broken. Yes. We don't need to put a lot of pressure on it. So we have to find out how we can dispose our litter. That those are things that are there okay. within the what in in a what level? Ah, okay. <laughs> now, as a party in short, yeah, you came here. I said, talk to the people. I spoke to them. <laughs> they voted you. Yes. Now you have won the election. Mm -hmm. Address them again. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Zimbabweans. Thank you very much, um, people from Matibele Land, Batwaga Zabashe, Siabonga. Yeah. Uguti, you want to give us a chance as triple C to see that what our president is always talking about really is it a real deal or is just uh, a lip service uh, I want to appreciate Abandu Bagawat 4 in Matopo Mangwe which is what is called Mako Wat thank you very much uh, and then uh, my promise to you is that I am this leader that you have always uh, desired to have. A leader that is a unifier, a leader that works uh, for the purpose of developing the world, a leader that does not exclude anybody, a leader that does not uh, associate himself with corruption, a leader that says everybody is worthy to be listened to within the world. And what I'm kindly requesting is that everybody, everybody, it doesn't matter whether you are a Form 1, whether you are a, 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 a PhD holder or whatsoever, please, let's come together, uh, bring your ideas, because I'm not there because I know everything. I am there because I have uh, the courage, I have the passion, I've got the zeal to see our world becoming something else. But lastly, good people, and this goes to all Zimbabweans. We are such a, a country whereby we are so behind as far as development is concerned. It's because of our politics. Since 1980, we are having elections that are disputed, not because others are crybabies, but because of the facts that are on the ground, which can be denied by a person whom I will label as a moron. When you find that a person denies the fact that our politics is so toxic, our politics is so uh, vile, our politics is so uh, 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 segregatory, and it really excludes everybody uh, and only includes those that associate themselves with the ruling party. That is not the democracy. That is not what our forefathers, our fathers, our uncles, mothers fought for. They fought for one man, one vote. They fought for peace. They fought for land. When are we going to enjoy our country, our land, when we are fighting all the time? Let's stop this thing of fighting. Let's come together. Let's accept that things change. The new generation is coming. I'm a councillor today. 2028, a young man might come up. I must accept and um, acknowledge that things change. Thank you so much, and I want to thank you, Mkolisi, for that. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Mkolisi Nube, Ward 4 Councillor, Matopo Mangwe Constituents.
he was our guest today if you have any comments if you want to contact him use the comment section underneath this video for now i'm signing off don't forget to subscribe to this channel like this video and share it only see the sun of nube bye bye